With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Thursday, April 21st, 2016. Following a press release from Attorney General Bill Schuette on Tuesday, charges were leveled against three government employees in connection to Flint's water crisis. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that Genesee District Court Judge Tracy Collier-Nix authorized charges yesterday for Flint employee Michael Glasgow and Michigan Department of Environmental Quality employee Stephen Bush and Michael Prisby. Glasgow, the utilities administrator at the Flint water plant, has been charged with willful neglect of office and is accused of tampering with evidence after allegedly changing the results of tests in order to show that there was less lead in the city water than was actually measured. According to Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal, Glasgow noted in a previous interview that he was only following marching orders from supervisors who expected him to do whatever was necessary to start using the Flint River. The utilities administrator noted that before the switch was enacted in April of 2014, the department was understaffed and equipment upgrades were incomplete. Glasgow says that he was working 12 hours and more a day to prepare the plant for the deadline, adding that he was shocked that the city of Flint was pushing forward despite his opinion that the water plant was not ready, noting in an email that if water was distributed from this plant in the next couple of weeks, referring to the time right before the switch happened, it would be against his direction. According to the Flint Journal, Glasgow was the only certified operator at the water plant when it went into operation and signed off on documents that certified water samples were collected in accordance with the lead and copper rule. Prisby and Bush are charged with misconduct in office, conspiracy to tamper with evidence, tampering with evidence, a treatment violation of the Michigan Safe Drinking Water Act, and a monitoring violation of the Safe Drinking Water Act. Prisby, a former district engineer with the state's Office of Drinking Water and Municipal Assistance, allegedly told Glasgow at the Flint water plant that the anti-corrosion chemical phosphate was not required when Flint changed water sources. Bush, former DEQ district supervisor in the division, was suspended earlier this year pending an investigation tied to Flint water and is named multiple times throughout the emails released by Governor Snyder. All three men are facing felony charges. Glasgow faces up to four years in prison for the, for the tampering charge, while Bush and Prisby each face up to five years in prison on the misconduct charges. Both Bush and Prisby pled not guilty to the charges and are due back in court May 4th for a probable cause hearing, while Glasgow has not yet been arraigned. Michigan Attorney General Bill Schuette guaranteed that more charges are on the way. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that the Attorney General said that the charges leveled yesterday are only the beginning and there will be more to come. The Attorney General declined to comment on who his staff has spoken with as part of the investigation, adding that no person or issue was off limits. Schuette says that the investigation, when it is completed, will be thorough, it will be complete, it will be exhaustive, and that the law will be enforced. Genesee County Prosecutor David Layton, who is also leading an investigation into the city's water crisis, said he also expects further charges in the not-too-distant future. Layton says that the charges filed yesterday are certainly not the end of the investigation, adding that he has been in regular contact collaborating with the Attorney General's staff. According to Layton, the ongoing investigations are shaping up to be very lengthy and extensive. Mayor Karen Weaver said yesterday that justice is being served, and that's what her administration wanted to happen. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that the mayor says that she expects more criminal charges will be filed against higher-ranking officials than those charged yesterday, adding that they want anybody and everybody that had a hand in bringing harm to the citizens of Flint to be held accountable. And finally, the U.S. Treasury announced yesterday that the Civil War-era abolitionist Harriet Tubman has been selected to appear on the $20 bill. The New York Times reports that the image of Tubman will be on the front of the $20 bill, while Andrew Jackson moves to the back. The Treasury also announced that a pair of civil rights scenes, one featuring suffragist leaders, will appear on the backs of redesigned $5 and $10 bills when the new designs are unveiled in 2020. According to USA Today, the Treasury Department originally intended to replace Alexander Hamilton on the $10 bill, but an apparent public outcry based on the popularity of a Pulitzer Prize-winning Broadway musical based on Hamilton's life convinced Treasury Secretary Jacob Blue to change which bill would receive Tubman's likeness. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.